Hi guys, welcome to lesson 9-3, solving quadratic equations. Yay! Our objective is that I can solve quadratic equations by graphing and using square roots. In, this, in the quadratic function, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the value of b affects the position of the axis sim of symmetry. And we are able to figure out where our vertex is. We could also figure out what our solutions are. So, an equation that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero is called the standard form of a quadratic equation. Okay, so standard form, we set it equal to zero. All right, so let's start off. We've got the solutions of a quadratic equation are the x-intercepts. A quadratic equation can have two, one, or no real number solutions. And the solutions of a quadratic equation are also referred to as roots of the equation. So you'll hear them talked about roots, and I think uh, on Khan Academy they refer to them as roots. You'll also hear them referred to as zeros of the function. So solutions, roots, and zeros all mean the same thing, and we are going to use them interchangeably. All right, so I want to graph a couple points here. So we've got x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. Well, to figure this out, let's just do a, an x and y table and figure out what is y at a couple different points of x. So if I plug in 0 for x, I get negative 16. If I plug in zero or 1 for x, 1 squared is 1, minus 16 is negative 15. If I plug in 2 for x, I get negative 12. 3 for x, ooh, not even on the screen. 3 for x, and I get negative 7. And 4 for x, and I get 0. And I'm going to just stop right there because that gets me enough points. So we're going to graph y, or sorry, x, e, x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. So 15. 16, I thought I changed that so we had enough room, but we'll put our a 0, 16 right there. 1, negative 15, so that's right there. 2, negative 12, right there. 3, negative 7. And 4, 0. So that's one side. Now I just need to mirror it to the other side of my axis of symmetry. Okay, so now I'm looking, my roots are my x-intercepts. Well, I cross the x-axis right there and right there. So my roots for this function are 4, 0, and negative 4. 0. Okay. Our next one, we've got x minus 2, the quantity squared, is equal to 0. This is written in what we call vertex form. We're not going to really deal with that because um, it's kind of annoying. So what we're going to just do is we're going to just convert this into standard form like we've seen it before. So to do that, we're going to need to FOIL it. So I'm going to use one of my special rules. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. So I used that perfect square rule to multiply this real quickly. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use an x and y table of values. And we're going to come up with a couple different places on our graph that are going to be useful for us. Uh, so I'm going to go with 0, 1, 2, uh, and let's go with negative 1 as well. Kind of out of order, but whatever. One of the things is this, so the first one we just knew we were shifting down 16 units because there was no B term. This one has a B term. So we could find what our vertex is. So our vertex is the opposite of B, so positive 4 over 2A, 2 times 1, which is 4 over 2. So the x coordinate of our vertex is 2. And this is vertex. So x-coordinate is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 squared is 0, 
So 2, 0 is my vertex. So that gave me a starting point, and when I wrote my numbers, I kind of forgot one. So we went from 2, and I went to the left, 1, 0, negative 1. So that'll give us four points to be able to graph from. All right, so uh, we know 2, 0, that's our vertex. So now we've got a point at 1, 1. So we've got 1, 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 is going to be at 4. 0 minus 2 is negative 4. Squared is 4. four. And negative 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. Okay, So we've got a couple points that we can use to graph here. So we had our vertex. We have a point at 1, 1. We have a point at 2, 0. Sorry. We have a point at 2, 0. That's our vertex. Uh, 1, 1. We have a point at 0, 4. 0, 4 right there. We have a point at negative 1, positive 9. So that's this half of our graph. What's our right side? So we just mirror it across. Mirror, mirror, mirror. Okay, now where am I touching the x-axis? In this case, it's only going to be at one point, and it's right there at the vertex. So my solution for this one is my vertex. That is the only place where it is touching the x-axis. So this is a case where there is only one solution to the quadratic equation. I want you guys to try letters C and D on your own, and then I will go over them. All right. So the first thing, is this one in standard form? I don't think so. So we need to add 25 to both sides so that it'll be equal to 0. So then we get x squared is equal to 0. Well, we've graphed that before, right? So we have x, y. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. We've graphed that before many, many times. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. So we have our graph right there. Mirror it across to the other side of our axis of symmetry. So our only solution for this problem is right there at 0, comma, 0. It's the only place we're touching the x-axis. All right, letter D. We've got 3x squared plus 6 is equal to 0. Well, let's find our vertex first. So it's the opposite of B over 2A. Opposite of B, well, my B term is 0 over 2 times 3, which 0 divided by anything is 0. So we plug in 0, and our y-intercept is going, or sorry, our uh, vertex is going to be at 0, 6. So we start at a point at 0, 6. What do I know about this graph? Well, my a term is positive, so it's going to be opening up. Interesting. So let's uh, plug in a couple points here. We have x and y, so let's just go 1 and negative 1. So 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3 plus 6 is 9. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3 plus 6 is 9. So now we have a point at 1, 9 and 1, 9. Now why did I only do two points? Because right there I can see that this graph is never, ever, ever going to touch the x-axis. So there are no solutions. Problem number two, solving using square roots. Um, this is going to be useful when there is uh, no B term. Okay, so if there is no B term, then we're going to be able to solve using square roots. And none of these six lovely equations have a B term, so we can solve by square roots. So what we're going to do is we are going to get the squared term by itself. So we're going to add 36 to both sides of our equation. 
So m squared is equal to 36. And now we are going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Square, the, uh, square root of squared, those are two opposite operations, so they cancel out. So we're left with m is equal to 6, but it's going to be plus or minus 6, because 6 can either be positive or negative, right? 6 times 6 is 36. Negative 6 times negative 6 is also 36. So there are two solutions to that equation, plus or minus 6. Okay, uh, letter B, we're going to subtract 15 from both sides. So we get 3x squared equals negative 15. Divide both sides by 3. x squared equals negative 5. Square root, well, x is equal to, huh? We don't have any numbers that can multiply by themselves to equal a negative, so this is going to be no solution. And uh, as a forward for uh, future years, when you get to these kind of equations in other math classes, uh, particularly Algebra 2, that is when you start to introduce the imaginary numbers. Haha, you think this is bad now. Just wait till you have imaginary numbers. They're not even real. All right, so we're going to add 30 to both sides for letter C. 3x squared is equal to 0. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x squared equals 0. Square root of both sides, x equals 0. So you'll notice this one has two solutions. This is no solutions. This is one solution. Okay, all right, I want you guys to try letters D, E, and F on your own, and then I will go over them. So letter D, I start by adding 196 to both sides of our equation. So x squared is equal to 196. Take the square root of both sides. x is equal to 14, plus or minus. Now, this would be a good point time to point out that um, algebra classes, you're going to have a pop quiz at some point in the next week of perfect squares from 1 through 15. Have them all memorized. You have been warned. Hopefully you're watching this video with the sound on and you know you've been warned. I'm looking at Zerzo's class. So we're going to add 45 to both sides of our equation for letter E. 5x squared equals 45. Divide by 5. x squared is equal to 9, take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to plus or minus 3. Okay. Last problem, we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. 4x squared equals negative 16. Divide by 4, x squared equals negative 4. No solution. And I would wait until you get your squared term by itself and you are about to square root before you start deciding it's no solution. Because sometimes with multiplication or division or with uh, addition or subtraction, you will end up taking a negative term on the right-hand side of the equation and making it positive as you work your way through the solution. So do not make your judgment until you get your squared variable isolated then you look and see. Okay, this is a negative 4, so I know that this one is no solution. Okay. Problem number 3. An aquarium is being designed to exhibit an or to is designing a new exhibit to showcase tropical fish. The exhibit will include a tank that is rect a rectangular prism with a length L that is twice the width. That seems pretty important. Length is twice the width. And a height of 4 feet. The volume of the tank is 500 cubic feet. What is the width of the tank to the nearest tenth of the foot? All right. So I have the tank drawn in here. I've got a length. I have a width. And I have a height. And the book problem started with three feet. We're going to start with four feet. Does that show up well enough? Good enough. All right. So I'm told that my length is twice the width. Well, if width is w, length is twice the width. So that's going to be 2w. 
So now when I look at my equation, the volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. I know my volume, 500 cubic feet, is equal to my length, which is 2w, times my width, w, times my height of 4 feet. So 500 equals 8w squared. Divide both sides by 8. W squared is 62.5. And we need to take a square root of both terms. Well, this is not going to be a perfect square. So when we take type in the square root of 65, sorry, 62.5, we get 7.9056, blah, 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 blah. Remember, these are irrational numbers. It means they will go on forever without repeating. And I was told I need to round to the nearest tenth of a foot. So I'm going to say 7.9 feet is my width. Okay. Make sure you're including your units. All right, letter B, the length of a rectangular prism is three times the width. The height of the prism is five inches. So length is three times the width. Height is five. If the volume is 80, what is the length of the prism round to the nearest tenth? So let's just do a quick little sketch off to the side here. So we have a quick little sketch. We've got 3w. We have our height is 5. And the width of our prism is also w. What's up? Um, when is first um, stage crew meeting? Monday. Monday. Yeah. So volume of an equation is length times width times height. We know our volume from the story is 80 is equal to the length, which is 3 times the width, times the width, times the height. So 80 equals 15w squared. Divide by 15. 80 divided by 15 is 5.3 repeating. So this is one where I would use my calculator and I wouldn't. Um, take any factors out. So we do 80 divided by 15 and that's 5.3 repeating and then I'm just going to take my calculator and use the square root tool and select the previous answer so the calculator knows it's 5.3 repeating. Take the square root of it and I get 2.3. So W equals 2.3 inches. Okay. Um, I want you guys to try to avoid rounding any of your answers until the very end uh, because anytime we are rounding we are losing precision in our answer and we want to try to be as precise as we possibly can be. All right, letter C we have the diagram shows a plan for the new garden. It's going to be 2x by x and we want to use 1.5 cubic yards of topsoil and it's going to be four inches deep. Now this is actually one of the elements that I had to do for my Eagle project when I was a Boy Scout. Um, what we wanna do is convert four inches into uh, 36, or we wanna convert inches into yards because these two measurements are being done in yards, so let's convert it. So we have four inches, and that is times one yard per 36 inches. Hey, unit conversions, two six is coming back. So four over 36 is going to be reduced to one ninth. All right, so a ninth of a yard. So we've got our volume is equal to length times width times height. Volume is 1.5 cubic yards is equal to our length, which is two X our width, which is x, and our height, which is 1 ninth. So 1.5 equals 2 ninths 
x squared, divide by that 2 ninths, and we get x squared is equal to uh, 6.75. And then we take the square root of that, and x is going to be equal to 2.6 yards wide. Okay. But what are the dimensions? We need to have two dimensions. So if this is 2.6, and I know my length is twice this, I know my yard is, or the garden is 5.2 yards long. So those are my two equations. Now if I were to test it, I did 5.2 times 2.6 times 1 ninth, which is my depth, I should get 1.50. And that is uh, that 2 repeating there is just going to be a rounding error because we had to round at some points. Okay, so it would be 1.5 cubic yards, which is what we're looking for. All right. That's all for today. Make sure you fill out your level of understanding. Write down any questions that you may come up with during this lesson. And make sure you fill in a summary of how to solve quadratic equations by graphing and by using square roots. See you in class.